I'm Connor Moyer with the Cherry Grove Ag Society and I'm with Danny today talking about horse safety. Danny, who are we working with today? This is Goose and this over here is Luna. So one of the things that we'd like to talk about today is tying up your horse safely before you do any grooming or hoof care to your animal. And Danny's going to give us an explanation of how to tie our horse. So there's many different ways to tie a horse. Just about everybody you meet is going to show you something different. And when you're tying up a horse, you need to make um, a decision about whether or not it's more important for the horse to stay tied or for the horse to be released safely in an emergency. So if this arena was packed full of people and there was an event going on, I'd make sure to tie a knot that he couldn't get out of no matter what, because if he got free, we'd probably have more of a wreck if he was running around with a bunch of other horses. But if it's just you and I here working with a horse, I might want to tie a knot that he can quick, quickly release if he's in a bind, because if he gets away, all he's going to do is drag his rope and it'll be okay. Um, when you're tying a horse, it's important not just how you tie them, but where you tie them. And so you always want to pick something that's secure. Um, you want to pick something that's not going to pull off with them because that can be dangerous. And you also want to make sure that you tie them at about eye height or higher because if you tie a horse too low, they could step over their rope and cause a wreck. Um, and there's, there's many other things that could go wrong. Okay. So for today, I'm just going to show you a really simple quick release knot. I'm just going to pull it over the fence like that. I'm going to make a little loop here on the side, come around the front and underneath with another loop, and then just pull that tight. So for this knot, Goose can pull pretty hard from his end. He's going to pull and try and get to the grass probably. <laughs> and he can't get free. But if something happens and I need to release him quickly, or if I just want to release him to go somewhere else, I can pull that and it very quickly releases. So it's safe for both him and I. So now that we've covered tying our horse safely, uh, maybe we should go over a safe approach and how to check over our animal. Okay, so when you bring your horse in from the field, it's good to just do a uh, walk around and check them out because there's lots of things that can happen. And when you approach a horse, since their eyes are on the sides of their head, um, it's best to approach them more from the side. He can see me better right here than he can see you right in front of him. And so a horse feels more safe when you work with them from the side. Um, so this time of year, there's lots of reasons that they'd have bumps and scratches from bug bites and scratches from wire and all kinds of different things that might be laying on your field. So it's good to just run a hand over and see what you're working with. You might find like on his chest here that there's it's a little worse than you realize there's scabs from bugs getting in there. So you can just kind of run your hand over it so you can see what you're dealing with. Check to see if he might be in any kind of pain. So if their scabs are getting bad, they would bleed or? Yeah, this is something that I put an ointment on that keeps the bugs off of it and also protects his skin. Okay. And there's all kinds of bug bites, but these are pretty minor. And you were talking about their eyes and stuff. Is there anything up in their eyes that you need to kind of focus for? You can always look for any kind of discharge. A little bit of eye goo is normal and crusties like we have when we wake up from sleeping. But if it's got kind of a green tinge or if there's lots of it, that might be something you want to keep an eye on. Okay. And then in, in, with the ears or anything up in, like, are they kind of like cats where you got to worry about any problems, flies getting in? Yeah, this time of year, it's good to put fly ointment on the inside of their ears if they'll let you. Lots of horses don't like their ears being touched. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's full of scabs right now because the bugs, they get after them pretty bad. Okay. And so from his head, when she checked that out and everything seems all right. The next thing you want to do is check out his front feet and his legs. And when you're working with a horse, like I said, it's best to be on their side and close to them. Um, they like to know that you're there, so keeping a hand on them and talking to them helps them feel secure. And when you're looking at a horse's legs, or you're going to pick up their feet. It's important to run your hand all the way down. And then when you want to lift a foot, you just squeeze their tendon and they'll pick it up for you. So. When you're, uh, when you're checking your front feet, what are you looking for here? Well, first you want to use a hoof pick and clean it out so you can get a better picture of what his foot looks like. You're looking for little stones or anything that he might have stepped on that could be lodged in his foot. 
Those can cause a lot of pain and they can also get embedded in his foot and travel up and blow out as an abscess. So where would you see your abscess mostly up in here? Or? You could see an abscess blow out along the hairline. You could see it blow out beside the frog in the toe. Sometimes you see a crack in the foot and that's because an abscess is blown out. And an abscess can be caused from even just a tiny little stone getting stuck in there and getting pushed up. Oh. So when you're looking at it, you want to see if there's anything lodged in there that shouldn't. And it's always good just to press to see if there's any sore spots. You should be able to press as hard as you can and that shouldn't, you shouldn't feel a thing. But if there's a sore spot or an abscess brewing or a stone in there, he might show you that that's a little bit sensitive. Okay. And so overall with the hoof, um, anatomy wise, what are the different parts of the hoof here? So this here is the frog. Uh, this is live tissue that gets compressed by the ground and pushes blood to flow through his leg and all the rest of his body. Um, this here is what we call the sole. These are the bars. And as I said, this is a hoof that needs to be trimmed. He's due for his eight week trim. <laughs> These are his heels. This is the toe and this is the hoof wall that connects to the sole. So now that we've gone through the front hoof, we'll go on to the back. Um, a lot of the same coming down to the tendon and picking up the foot, resting the horse on your leg. Did you want to just kind of go over some of the things, checking over the back, that would be different over the front? Yeah, you're doing a good job because you're tucked in close to him there. And one of the most dangerous spots you can be around a horse is, is at their hind end. But when you're standing like Conrad is, you're a lot less likely to get hurt because he's tucked in close. And right now, the way he's standing, he's firm and he's got a wide stance. If that horse decides to kick, there's a pretty good chance he's going to hang on and not get hurt. But if he was further out to the side, or even worse, further out behind, that kick's gonna hurt a lot more if it lands on him. And you're gonna have a lot less um, power to hold his leg. So what you're doing here is good. You're gonna have um, a lot easier time standing for long periods when you're wide-legged stance like that. And when you're looking at the back feet, you're just checking for all the same things. You're making sure there's nothing in there that looks like it might be uncomfortable. There's all kinds of things like wire and nails that you could find and step on in a field that could get lodged in there. So you're just checking to make sure this horse is, is sound and he's not in pain anywhere. So now that we've finished checking over this side of the hooves, we'll have to move around the back side of the horse. Uh, this is one of the danger zones. Uh, if you're farther out, the chances of having that foot end up here and hitting is a lot worse than if you're right in close as such because the foot can't come out with as much force as it can here. So is there any other things that was coming around the rear that we should be aware of? Yep, just exactly what you're doing. So what horses are scared of is the unknown. So if they don't know what you're doing back there, it might worry them. But if you're talking to them and you have a hand there, they know that you're just walking behind them. So although they can't understand your words, just having your voice there lets them know how close you are. And keeping a hand there does the same thing. So when you move around the back of a horse, it's best practice to keep a hand on them and to just come in close. Just like that. So now that we've covered going over the hooves and we've gone over the back, um, well, goose is like this, is there anything else with the rear here that we should be checking over? Tail, uh, legs? Yeah, you can always lift the tail to check for any sores or anything here. Something you might want to groom off. It's important to keep their tail brushed and separated because when it comes to protecting themselves from flies, um, a tail that's spread out like this is a lot better weapon than something that's wrapped up or matted and skinny like that. So just giving him the best defenses to protect himself from those pesky bugs. So now we've covered kind of going around the rear hooves. Um, when you're checking over the main body, uh, sores and stuff, what are you looking for? You want to look for anything that might be making him uncomfortable or might make him uncomfortable when you put a saddle on him. And so just familiarizing yourself with what's normal for your horse. Ideally, you're checking them every day and you're going to notice a change. Something like this here. Goose lives with a few other horses, so to me this looks like a bite, which is pretty likely since there was a new guy introduced recently. Um, so that's not cause for concern, but don't ever forget to go 
underneath his belly because this is where we put the cinch to do up a saddle. And anything under there that's uncomfortable is gonna become a lot more uncomfortable if you tie something up tight around it. Mm -hmm. okay. So just with your hands before you run a brush over is sometimes a good way to do things. Very good. And the uh, and you were pointing out here the flies are earlier. Yeah, so these little yellow dots are bot fly eggs. And so they are really sticky. The only way to get them off is with a little, it's called a bot fly knife. I don't have one here with me today, but it's like a little razor. And you just have to shave them off because they're meant to stick there so that they can hatch and actually burrow into the skin, which is pretty nasty. And ideally, you want to save your horse from that as much as possible. So that's something you can do while grooming is just shave those off with a bot fly knife. Oh, okay, so is there common areas where they're more prominent or can they develop anywhere? They can put them anywhere, but it's more common on the legs. And you can see on this one, there's quite a few. They're pretty sticky. Like he's got a bit of a bump here. Um, what would you suspect that to be? So uh, horse flies can cause a pretty nasty bump when they bite, but there's a lot of other things it could be. Um, this bump here happens to have kind of a hard core in it. So that might be something we want to watch um, or ask a vet about. Horses can get moles and strange bumps just like we can, but you just want to monitor it. If it gets bigger, you might want to check it out. When I push on it, he doesn't seem too worried. If it caused him a lot of pain, that might raise a red flag a little more than it does right now. But it's just something you want to be aware of. So by checking your horse every day and putting your hands on them, you can monitor changes. So what I kind of hear you saying is you got to listen to your horse as you're checking them over too. That's so. right. He'll tell you if something's not like it should be. This here looks kind of scary. This is a bite from another horse. He took the hair off, but when I press on it, it doesn't bother him. Okay. If it was something that needed more attention, he'd likely wince or you could see a pain reflex by his skin kind of moving, shrugging when you touch it. So now that we've covered going over the horse, checking for any marks or uh, problems that we might have with them, uh, we'll move on to grooming. Uh, since I have really no idea what this one's for, <laughs> do you want to start with the uh, different types of brushes and what they what they uh, do for your horse? Sure, so there, there are a lot of type of brushes, but today I've just kind of brought your basic three. You've got a rubber curry comb, and this is good for digging dirt out. So some curry combs you want to use in a circular motion, to get the dirt and hair out. Right now they're not shedding and she's not that dirty, so probably not that necessary to use that on her whole body. But somewhere like her feet, um, you can see if you want to pick that one up, there's some mud caked on at her fetlock. So if you want to scrub that off, that's the best brush to do it with. Because that stuff can get a little bit itchy and uncomfortable. Same way as if we had mud caked on our skin, you might want to get it off. She does quite well, actually. And then from the rubber curry comb, you'd want to just use a, a harder brush like this with coarse bristles. And that's going to do something similar. It's just going to take all the uh, dirt out of her hair and brush anything caked on off her skin. Very good. Again, this horse is already pretty clean. So this is just a soft dandy brush, they call it. It's a lot softer if you touch it than this one. You can feel there's quite a difference. Yes. And that's gonna get the dust off her. And it's important to have your horse clean and groomed, especially where the saddle goes before riding, because anything that's left on can cause a lot of discomfort once you put weight on it and once it's cinched up tight. So when you're brushing, is there a particular way that you should brush? Yeah, always with the grain of the hair, way that it grows. It's just like you and I, if somebody back combs our hair, it doesn't feel as good as if you rub it the way it's going. So to keep them comfortable, just always brush in the direction that the hair grows. So now that we've covered uh, brushing, the different types of brushes, uh, you have some ointments and stuff here too, if you'd like to kind of just go over what they do. Yeah, just because we're kind of in peak fly season right now, you're gonna find a lot of um, little bites and things. And I don't know if you can see on her chest here, 
She's kind of eaten up a little bit by bugs. As much as we use fly sprays and fly sheets, there's usually still some damage. And so there's lots of different ointments you can use. Uh, this one's hot pink, so you can see where you put it. Um, and if you put it on those wounds, it helps heal the wound and keeps the flies off it. So before you go for a ride, if you want your horse more focused on what you're asking them to do than the, bot, the flies bugging them, sometimes you want to put it under their eyes, places where they go. But definitely if there's any sores that they're more attracted to. Um, and if they'll let you, she's not crazy about it, but it's good to get it in their ears. All the places that the flies bug them most, because if you're riding along and they're getting eaten by flies, they're going to be tossing their head and swishing their tail and stomping around and that's not what we want. Chances of coming off the trail goes a little bit higher. Yeah, definitely. So this stuff, it may not be that pretty, but at least you can see where it is. So um, that's one of the benefits of having a pink one. There's always clear ones and there's lots of sprays and different things that can repel flies. Some horses like being sprayed, some don't. She doesn't. <laughs> nope, but, not very much. <laughs> but when a horse doesn't like that, I'll trade you. Nope. <laughs> if you want to pass me a, that soft brush, here we go. Another way that you can do it because she's going to back away when I spray her. And if I don't want to fight with her trainer right now, you just spray the fly spray on the soft brush. Ooh. And then you can get it on them that way. You never want to spray their face anyway. So if you want to get it on their face and it's not in a paste, you can use the brush for that as well. So now that we've finished going over the horse, grooming, checking hooves, we're ready to saddle. Uh, we're just gonna go over a quick saddle, going into the in-depth procedures and sizing for a saddle is overly complicated for the time that we do have, but we just kinda wanted to go over a quick saddle. So when you're saddling a horse, um, proper practice is to do it from the left-hand side. Most horses are trained to be worked on from the left. Um, I think it's important to work on horses from both sides, but when you're approaching a horse you don't know or you haven't ridden before, it's always best practice to work from the left. Um, so if you want to safely walk around her, we'll work from her left hand side, always staying close like we said, talking to her, letting her know what we're up to. And the first thing that goes on is the pad. We're not going to talk about where it should be or what kinds of tack there are for this video. Um, but the pad goes on first and that protects her from the saddle even though the saddle should fit her well. Just like Conrad's done here, you throw a stirrup over the horn, get all the rigging up on one side, and then you put the saddle on top of the pad. It's nice to drop the rigging gently so it doesn't scare them. Kind of hard to scare this horse anyways. <laughs> Untwist everything. When you're putting a saddle on, it's good practice to check all your tack to make sure that nothing's broken. Thank you. There's a lot of different parts that could help you get into a wreck if they were broken. And so while I'm doing this, Conrad's just making sure there's nothing ripped or broke and the leather integrity isn't compromised anywhere. Nothing worse than losing a stirrup. That's right. There's a piece in between the cinch and the back cinch called the cinch keeper. And this little piece of leather is actually pretty important because if it breaks, your back cinch can travel back and flank your horse. And anyone who's been to a rodeo knows what happens. <laughs> yes. When that happens. So, and not all saddles have the backs since you know. Not all saddles have them. And another important safety tip is to never ever tie your horse up by the reins because that's attached to this piece of metal that's in her mouth. 
Mm. And if she ever pulled back, not only would you have some expensive tack probably broken, but there's a good chance she'd hurt herself and you could get into a real wreck. So when you have her all ready like this, how would you suggest having her tied up to the fence then? At this point, she's not tied up to the fence. No. But if I wanted to, to have something on this horse, um, I could put this halter back over top of her bridle so that I can take it off when I'm ready to get in and saddle and ride. Very good. So if you're gonna, if you have a horse that's fully saddled and bridled and you don't want to take anything off, you can just put this halter over top of everything here and tie by that halter um, instead of anything that's inside of her mouth.